heart of the matter is that everything that happens to us in life has to process through our heads, yes? So everything you and I do, every interaction that we have on the job, off the job, always filters through this thing called the brain. And I don't know how these five days are hitting with your real life. You probably had lots of things you could do this week. But this is the week to make sure you have a fuller understanding of the three pounds that we call our brain. Because every interaction you have professionally and personally gets filtered through your brain and through the brains of the people that we are interacting with. So we often say we're getting to the heart of the matter and we point here. But this week you're going to be challenged to see the heart of the matter is here. It's kind of the birth of the SWAT team mentality, the special weapons and tactics thought process. Uh, however, negotiations were never really the key part in the beginning. The kind of beginning was just forced to let the chips fall where they may. Um, I guess that sounded good on paper. The problem is a lot of cops were getting hurt and a lot of cops were dying uh, in situations. And when you look back at hindsight, with some time and some dialogue, <coughs> and some adolescents, they don't seem to have the response that a more mature person would have. You show up in uniform, and I'm probably calling you sir. Some of you have had young people when you show up, and they're cussing you out. Because they don't have that whole part of their brain to be able to make a decision. The state of survival, whether we're going to let that emotional center part of our brain be in control, or whether we're going to make the mature part of our brain be in control. <coughs> So if you are responding to a 32-year-old, they may very well have this part of their brain, but this emotional part could have the throne of their life. Does that make sense? I'm gonna make a wild suggestion that in here, all of us have come to terms and have made a decision that most of the time, we have made this part the king or queen of our life. We are allowing that to have the fuller rain. We good? Normal or not so normal? Um, I need uh, in a minute to win it, you guys to come up with some questions about adolescence, mental health, and all that stuff. And I'm gonna try to get to as many questions as possible. So every group needs at least one question. Go, 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 go. Think in philosophical deep thoughts. But it does become the foundation on which the billions and billions and billions of brain cells develop. And so when drugs are being used by mom in utero, it is affecting the whole brain. On the day of our birth, we had roughly 50% of our brain mass already in our head. Even though this is the last to reach maturity, it was with us in utero. By the time we are three, we have 75% of the total mass of our brain in our head at that point in time. So when there is uh, prenatal exposure to drugs, it can affect. After birth, it can affect. And it affects all of it, but here's what you need to know. This part of the brain is simple, very simple. It is like the on-off switch to your computer. <coughs> the top part of your brain is very complex. In fact, one cell in the top part of your brain may be connected to 7,000 on average other cells. So if you lose one brain cell here, it affects 7,000 plus other brain cells. So the damage is much more likely to be here with substance abuse and substance use. Great question. Well, it's looking at it to the left, but you're... Ah, great. So it could be, from my perspective, it's pointing a different way. But even from my perspective, even though it's your left, it's my right, it's still pointing that way. Any body see that completely different? And by the way, from the back versus the front, 
the perspective says this is different size, but this is basically the same size whether you're looking at it in the front or the back. True? <coughs> Watch. What did you notice happening? Huh? It got bigger and bigger. It got bigger. I created an optical illusion, yes? I believe the water is going to be relevant to how we're going to start to move towards a close on this. Watch this. What was different? <laughs> Jamie, they're hallucinating now. All right. The farther we go away from it, the more that illusion kicks in. Yes. What happened to the overall size, though? Smaller. Smaller. Are you with me on this? The ability then, to be able to say, oh, he's in the purple brain. He's seeing the arrow go a different way. There are some things I can do to make some change. So it could be that the water represents hormones. What else could the water represent, by the way? <coughs> it could represent emotions. 25% more typically in females than mm -hmm. males. Certainly more when you are a young adolescent and that part of your brain is the strongest part of the brain you've got. Love that. Could the water represent anything else? Say that? Traumatic events. Traumatic events. And by the way, now I want to put some dirt in this. Some of that stuff is dirty and yucky. But it would still do the same thing, just harder to see by. Love. If you can take what you've learned and say, I don't see it as pointing that way. But if that's where she's at, then I can adjust how I'm stepping into that situation. If you've been given a light, please rise and shine while there is still light. Thank you all very much. Kim? Audience, what do you think? Any changes? Shouldn't the vision loss probably be? That's a good point. I don't think they define it. Average impact on your daily life. I feel like breast cancer. We call Hope for uh, they came in every week, and they came in and saw the judge every week. In addition to that, they were seeing counselors and or um, their probation officers three to four or five times a week. And if they didn't go to one class, no probation violation has to be filed, no hearings have to be set, no attorneys have to be appointed, and then ultimately have a hearing before you can sanction them. Judge Martin spoke about the Hope Court enough that you understand what the um, the reason is for creating the home court but judge martin also talked about um, other a reason why we have it and here is my reason is ashley kennedy she just graduated from hope court she's made
some nice pictures you got going there. Thank you. Awesome. Can you do me a favor? No. No? Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. So what are you drawing there? You know, it just, I go where the art goes, you know, I mean, I just can't. Whatever the music yeah, takes Yeah, wherever you know. the music takes me. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. What's the song called? Uh, it's called Run to the Hills by Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Can we turn that down a little bit so no, we can talk? No, 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 it's really, I can turn it down, but I won't turn it off. That's fine, that's fine. As long okay. as you turn it down, just so we can talk and we can hear each other, that'd be perfect. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Great, 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 great. How are you feeling today? Oh, just fine. I mean, I think I'm doing really well, don't you? Uh, from the, the way the picture is looking, you're going really well. I know. Thank that's you. Great. Thank we got a call today, ma'am, for the loud music. Oh, today. that's so not just, my problem. <laughs> I know. I, I know. We're just here going on jobs. Okay. So. Everything good? Yep, I'm great. All right. I, I think I seem really great, so I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. Energy's great. I Energy's know. Great. Thank it's, you so much. Do you take any medication? Um, no, not really. What, what, sometimes I have been in the hospital, but that's just, you know. What were you in the hospital for? Oh, you know, I just needed a little medication here and there, but I don't need it. I'm doing really well. Yeah. What meds were you supposed to do? Oh, I don't remember. Just whatever they gave me, but I, I, it slows me down. See, right. you, you see how great this is going to be for a New York show. So. And what hospital was that? <laughs> oh, Whatever it is up on the hill there. Oh. Hmm. What hill was that? Well, in town here, you know, up on, up on the hill. Uh, whatever. Bethesda Genesis, whatever it's called. Okay. And how long did you stay in that hospital? Mm, I don't know. Maybe a couple of days. You remember what it was for? No, I, I just, just, you know, maybe it had a little too much energy one day. I don't know what people's problems are, really. And how much medication did they prescribe? Oh, you? Lord have mercy. If I knew that, I'd be taking it. Right, okay. <laughs> so how long, when was the last time you took the medication? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I mean, I've been up for like two or three days. So a couple weeks ago, maybe? You know. And you're supposed to be taking this every day? Yeah, I think so. But I, I, my prescription ran out. <coughs> the doctor, anyway, I, I'm not. So I, I'm, I'm fine, really. Okay. Do you go in counseling? Oh, I tried that. It doesn't work. I mean, have you ever been to a counselor before? Please. Do you think I need it? I mean, come on. What counselor was you going to? Oh, God, I don't remember. When's the last oh. time you've been to counselor? Uh, I don't know. A couple months ago, maybe? And do you remember what your counselor's name was? No. No, no, no. no. Doctor somebody. And that was at Genesis as well? Uh, I think so. I think so. I don't know. There's a behavioral health center or something yeah. that they send everybody to. It's just a formality, really. Right. So you haven't took your medication in months and you've been going to counseling and obviously you haven't been going. Not really. You know, here and there. Oh, yeah. I see that. That's really pretty. That's perfect. I see. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, that's great. Yeah. Is there anything else I can help you yes. with? Yes. Uh, uh, see, what we were I just mean, wondering. You know. The music's down now. Which yeah, is perfect. yeah, yeah. I, I, just, I figured, you know, whatever. Stuff. <laughs> you know, two or three days. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Two or three days. And then wait for a long a couple yeah. days. Yeah. That, that's just how that's how I feed my art. So it, it works for me, right? Yeah. Happy tree. Did you like to tell my doctor? No, I don't think that's necessary. You've been up for three days. Well, I know. Don't you sleep. want to sleep? No. Yeah, but I've got to finish this. I just have to finish this. It's almost done, really. I think it's doing really well. And then I'll crash, and I'll be fine. Hey, look, I turned my music off for you, and that's what you wanted, right? Right. Okay, great. So what happens when you crash? <sighs> I just sleep for like two or three days, you know. Is that healthy? Do you think that's healthy? Well, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> You think going without sleep for that long is good for you? Oh, I get a lot accomplished, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Does it make you tired? Well, sure, after a while, but you know. For now, I'm great. Did you want to listen to another Iron Maiden song? I do, as long as you keep the volume low. Okay, great. Play another one. Okay. Stop.
testing. Yep, we went through all that, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And it just continued to progress the older he got to the point now that we know we have autism plus we have mental health issues. And every day is different for us. Yeah. <laughs> every day. Sometimes by, by the hour. <laughs> also come in on an order to convey. Probate, there's a lot of different ways that people come into the facility, but we do take involuntary and voluntary admissions. Um, public safety will probably be there, will always be there if they're um, involuntary admission. If you come in the ER, I will have a police officer at the metal detector who will be there to help you. And if you could help them by uh, letting them know if you've done a full search of the person and all that, it helps us in the back as well. If they need to go to the metal detector, we're there to help with that as well. Okay. So do you guys have any questions about ER? I know that there's probably I think every year we typically answer more questions than. So the flow through it, you guys are bringing people in from all over, <clears throat> all, all over, and uh, bring them in the ER. You're first going to see my officer there at the, at the front entrance. Let them, let them help you with a search if need be and all that stuff. Um, I do have a few female officers. They're she's mostly the one down in Perry County. There a lot. So I've seen it done. I've told people to do that a hundred times. In reference to uh, you just got brought up earlier in the week. As far as if you guys see these people, if not more, it's just as much as we do. Mm -hmm. um, so if they have a, a legal guardian, um, a lot of times they don't, you know, they admit that to us. They don't tell us, and, and we don't know, and they don't know how to operate a phone or, and Gretchen Wilson's Jesus, whatever. 
So mm -hmm. right, is that something that you guys can tell us when we get to the hospital where we bring them in and, and we're trying to make talks because learning this week, if we get a hold of that guardian, now we can start the ball rolling on how to get this person the help they need because the guardian can determine some things that they, they aren't willing to determine. Um, I don't know if we could share that or not. I don't I don't see why not, but we can check on that. It doesn't yeah, fall under the straight guidelines of PHI, protected health care yeah. information. It's, it seems like something we could, but we to cover us, we want to double check with our legal. Well that's just something we're trying to figure out. We're running into a lot of people here recently. Um, he's got an informant and uh, then uh, was medically discharged with a ten percent medical disability and uh, used the uh, VA uh, educational benefits to go resume my pre-med studies, graduate from medical school and became a doctor. Monday through Friday, if it's a moderate thing where they're throwing off vomiting, they'll go up to the detox center. At, uh, it's called New Horizons. Uh, I, I've heard rumors, I don't know for sure, but I think uh, Genesis is looking at expanding its addiction services. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and that can happen 24 seven at Genesis. Yeah. They can go into. Yeah, you can at least get them uh, into the ER. Uh, also the ER facility in Perry County uh, follows the same policies and procedures. And it's, it's a good source for, uh, as a matter of fact, when we get into a medical issue with one of our people in detox center, we send them up to the, the ER there in uh, Somerset. And they usually take care of that. Uh, the um, Dr. Tom Baker, who's one of the <coughs> ER doctors at Genesis, has got a program set up. It's called a bridge program where the subject and the, the author, Sam Cunone, actually gave a big talk here at Seacrest a few years back, which unfortunately I missed. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it is really good reading. It'll scare the crap out of you. So, all righty, anything else? Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, so we do have plus for more. <laughs> I tell you what, I really enjoyed working with you folks, and I hope I didn't bore you too much with my army stories. So, uh, uh, thank you for what you do from the bottom of my heart. Keep it up. So we're going to take a 15-minute break. So come back at 20 till. Get on.